You ready to get to it? Yes, I am. All right, let's get it going. And welcome back to the National Hockey Podcast. James Lincoln, here, here as always. And with me is John Zella of the Hockey Writers. What's going on, pal? I've not been able to get over the Islanders in February. It is only <laughs> March 2nd. Oh, so it has not been much time. Yeah. But having seen their record, I think it was 5 5 and 2. Am I making that up? They played 12 uh, games. That sounds right. I hated that because it felt like every month you were looking at the next month thinking, all right, if they just get through the month and maybe they kill it, they lose to some good teams, but they can get some points. All their teams around them can lose. Like they can do it. We're here. Yeah. Like they, they're like on, they're right there. And every month they're like, yeah, NHL 500. Uh, we lost to the wrong teams and uh, blew some other chances. You know, like it, it's just like more frustrating by the day or by the month, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, and it, that's that's it. It's things it's a little so more. Bad. It's things a little more too, knowing that the Washington Capitals are actually not playing super well right and now. And that that's what I mean. Like, there's just yeah. there's such a good opportunity here, and they just decided, hey, who cares? I mean, and they're also, <laughs> I, I, I'll say this too, and like, I'll sound like a broken record. The the games like last night, right? They lost by, you know, a, let's, we can go over this later. Like by, they, lo- they lose by a blown call and an empty netter to make it look worse than it was. That's the kind of game early in the season or even right now to be like, hey, we hung with those guys. We were that close. Yeah. This just, you can't use that excuse right now. Like that's, yeah. it's. It's just not something that you can say. And that's my, that's like the ever growing frustration that I have is they keep, yeah. they're really good excuses, even the beginning of the season to some degree. I mean, also, you're a professional, figure it out. But <laughs> I, I, there's only so much like, oh, boohoo. They had a, they, they weren't away from home that long. I and mean, we even said that at the time, was that overblown? So I don't even know that it's worth bringing up like, oh, this is a thing that happened in the beginning of the season. Although a lot of other people seem to be saying this. I don't know that it's, it, we've mentioned it before. It's not, I don't know that that was that big of a deal. Now the inconsistency isn't great. We've seen that a lot. Um, I've heard on other shows about other teams too. Goaltenders aren't as as sharp because February people were going, you know, the, the games were in and out and it wasn't consistent. So you're you're playing twice a week or whatever. Again, you're professionals. I you just you have to find a way. You have to dig deep. You're you can't go into the season like, oh, we're this team that went to back to back to back conference finals or conference final. Yeah, conference finals. And and then be like, oh yeah, we didn't play so much. I don't know. Like it's it sucks and I get it. I don't know. It, it, you just can't yeah, you, you gotta move on. You gotta do something with it so that you're not in February going guess we should have had that one <laughs> that's the post game i don't know i don't know what i expect anyone to say at this point it's just not that we're going to talk about comments regarding stuff like this a little bit later coming from the organization that's my rant um, i guess for today before we do that though <laughs> uh going back to that 5-5 five, five, and 2 record that you just mentioned you know what's not so different than that 5-5 five, five, and 2 record the two two and one record they just had on their five game road trip uh just this past week. Um now in the process of going two two and one, uh they did lose Matthew Barzell and Zidane Chara. We all know the former is much more significant than the latter. Um and who knows if maybe the Islanders might have squeaked out a win against the Colorado Avalanche at the tail end with Matthew Barzell in the lineup, but hey, they didn't. Um, what is today? So we haven't talked. I'm trying to figure out what games we didn't talk about at this point. Today's the March second. Today's March second. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. So we didn't talk about a few games. Yeah, including from from Seattle to today. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Good. good. Carry on. As so, you in the midst of this road trip, there were some good things. There were some bad things. For once. Let's talk about some good, right? Ilya Sorokin went 2-1-1 one, one with a 9.30 save percentage, a 2.23 goals against average, a 1.23 uh, GSAA, 
and a 955 high danger save percentage. That seems pretty good. How absolutely fucking maddening is it that he's playing even Varlamov? Let's give him credit because he's not the reason why they're no they're losing these games either, right? Um, give them both a ton of credit. Yeah, it's so frustrating to see. It's good for the future, I guess, but it's so frustrating. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. Um, one of the interesting things I took away from this road trip was Varlamov was pretty much ready to play for majority of it. Um, and he hasn't, he only played once and, you know, a lot of questions going into the deadline as to whether he will be moved or not. Like I've been on the record multiple times saying, I don't think he will be. I know I've reported that there has been interest that, you know, that's part of the job, but I, I really just don't think that he's going to be moved. And if he was going to be moved, it's likely that the Islanders would probably play him a little bit more just to showcase him and, and show that he's still the goaltender that he, you know, was last season when he put yeah, but up his those numbers are good this year. His numbers are good. So I don't, I mean, do you need to do that? If you, if you're, if you're kind of pushing Sorokin and he's your guy, keep doing it. I mean, Varlamo's numbers are good. Um, yeah, he'll get a game here teams and there. Traditionally like to showcase the guys that they're trying to sell. Maybe. I mean, I think it's definitely a thing I've heard. I don't know that that's like definitely the case. I've actually, in memory, uh, understand the opposite. You are protecting the people that you want to trade so that's they don't get hurt. Well. So now that doesn't mean anything, right? That's, I, I don't want to like, I'm not here speculating that they're not playing him because they don't want him to get hurt and they're going to trade him. He could just simply have, you know, had that conversation with coaching staff and said, I'm not 100%. I can back up. Sorokin's got it. They have a conversation. It's done. Good right? point. I, that's, I think that's just as likely as anything at this point. And I, you yeah. know, they're a smart team. And I, I think they pay attention to their players and they're not going to push anybody um, in what even internally could be like a lost season. And yeah. we know that. They know that. I don't know that it's been, it's definitely not been communicated um, from the Islanders to the general public as much as it's been from, our side of things to, to the team. Yeah. So they, you know, it could be a number of different things. Um, I don't know where I stand on, on Varlamov. I can understand not doing it because they don't really have a backup. It could be an off season thing. It could be Scarrick. It could be X player because they've been, or X goalie because they've been really good at finding goalies over the last few years. And just, especially now that, you know, okay, Sorokin's going to, you know, kind of outplay that other goalie three to one, we don't need them to split every single game throughout the season. Um, you just need to give Sorokin enough rest. Yeah. That's kind of the goal, right? He's your number one. You need to be able to play the other guy. I'm not talking Carey Price or, you know, Brodeur numbers back in the day. You know, they're not playing 70 games anymore, but if he's playing in the fifties, the other guy's got to be able to play 35 games, 30, 35 games. Yeah. Um, I will say this. If they are going to move him, I hope it is at the deadline. Because the price is much higher in the season, especially with term. I think they could still get a really nice deal for him in, at the draft or in the offseason anyway. But you kind of, it would be so much nicer. Yeah, I think you get a better package now. And then you go into the draft if you're going to make moves on draft day with $5 million more dollars with Varlamov off the books. Right. So. I don't know. I say if you're going to do it, if it is a possibility, do it sooner than later. Don't wait. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a good point. We have three weeks till the deadline. Uh, we've just under 20 days now. I think we're at 19 days until the trade deadline. So we'll see if that happens. I'm of the opinion it won't. Um, but, you know, anything can happen if the right offer comes along. Uh, I'm that's sure. That's probably that... the, the caveat. Yeah. What What's the offer? Um, that might, you know, I thinking out, think like outside the box, even just beyond the trade deadline. It could be part of a package deal to bring a defenseman back. Yeah, like you, like I think that's where you can kind of get creative, where it's like money in, money out, and maybe sure. a wash as far as that. But then you're not—he's the asset you're utilizing and leveraging, as opposed to Pavilier. Yeah, maybe you can save that. Maybe you can you can keep him in the lineup. Um, if you're able to move somebody else, like a Josh Bailey or whatever. Um, and you're offloading and clutter, but you know, like there's a lot of moving parts, I think, you know, to get money off the books and make sure that you're 
you're playing games with a cap to you know the best of your ability uh, during the off season. But that's something that we haven't discussed, and I haven't seen that because um, that could be an in season move. Yeah. That could be what Staples referring to when we spoke to him in January. That if the Islanders can make a move for somebody that will help them next season by the trade deadline, even if they're twenty points out, they'll do it. That might be the case with Varlamov. Bar- yeah, no, you're totally you can, right. For a forward, I don't know that it would be like a big forward, but if a team's out of the race and they just need, um, they just need a goalie for next season, yeah, I mean, I think you do that. You figure it out. But so I think there's there's a lot of possibilities, and all you can do is speculate, obviously, because we don't know anything with uh, the way that Lamarell does his job. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the the thing for me with with Varlamov is I just feel like he and Sorokin do have this good rapport with each other. Oh, they have a great bond. And you can tell. Yeah, I just I, – I feel like that matters. We'll talk about why more a little bit later because Lou Lamorello did have some comments on his group. Um, but we'll, we're going to get to that towards the tail end of the show. I want to get to a pair of guys – who we spoke about over and over and over again, seemingly through January. Those two are Kyle Palmieri and Zach Parise. Why did we talk about them so much through January? Mostly negative was because they could not find the score sheet, right? Well, fast forward to the current state of the Islanders, and Kyle Palmieri and Zach Parise are two of the best forwards for the Islanders currently. and. As shocking as that might be to say about those two guys, this is what they signed them for. I wrote a piece on this uh, a couple days ago. This is the Zach Parise and the Kyle Palmieri, more so Kyle Palmieri, that the Islanders signed up for. In uh, his last eight games, Kyle Palmieri has scored five goals. Uh, He's got six points. In Zach Parise's last six games, he's got eight points, three goals. This is what they asked for. When it came to signing these players, and again, oh, more Parise, so, yeah, okay, more so Paul Mary because he has the term Parise. We've had the, this discussion where we said, you know, he is what he is, right? Whatever he is, it's better than Komarov, and I, and I, I agree with that. Um, he's but not, he's, he wasn't brought in to; he was there to do this. Oh wow, yes. eight, you know, in a winning season. Oh, eight points in six games. It helped. You know, he got a, an assist and a goal against. The avalanche, that's unexpected. It's that the bottom of your lineup helping you to win championships and games, right? right? Like getting you far. He's not brought in to be the guy. He wasn't meant to be a fir- the first line winger. Um, Palmieri, absolutely, with Barzal was the, the idea. Palmieri, uh, Parise, no, that wasn't that wasn't the goal. He was a middle six at best, bottom six. Um, I don't know in practice. And yeah, I mean, that's great. You we want eight points in six games from your third liner. The fact that he's doing it on the first line is he's a, he's a better Komarov. So he's, he's able to produce more because he's right. got more speed and, you know, a history of offense. So yeah, he's going to, he's going to do that. If you put him with somebody like Barzal. So one of my questions coming to uh, Zach Parise before we talk about Kyle Palmieri is and, and the reason why I asked this question um, is because he was brought in to be an Islander because he's a he's a Lula Morello guy. And he's towards the tail end of his career, and he probably wants, even though he signed a one-year deal, some sort of stability in where he is. And he probably gets the opportunity to give his uh, choice as to whether he does or does not want to be traded at the trade deadline does Zach Parise get traded at the deadline especially given the recent success he's had and I, I'll go on the record to say it's actually been a little bit longer than the recent su- success that Kyle Palmieri has had he's been doing this a little bit longer now um, but with his success in the last couple of weeks maybe month or so does Zach Parise get traded I argue the relevance of the success because the team is still losing and they're not going to make the playoffs. So, okay. That was going to be my next question. Does the state of the Islanders in the standings 
take the pressure off of them and now they can just play freely and that's maybe why the points are coming i mean that happens to teams all the time it's happened to islander teams in the past it's been a long time since that's that it's happened they you know they have they haven't been out of the playoffs or in, in a rough spot but you know this is this a kind of a similar situation to and they're still not winning games right some players are having more success other players aren't and other other pieces of it are falling apart so maybe these particular players are feeling a little bit of that weight being lifted off their shoulders and um you know you get a couple it starts to come it's so much easier once the monkey is off your back a little bit and you're and you're feeling it you're not gripping your stick tight you feel like you know where you are you're supposed to be on the ice all of that happens you know happens with me when i play beer league some i'm not feeling it for a few weeks and all of a sudden there's a bunch of games in a row. I, I just like the puck just feels better on my stick. I'm mean, like mm-hmm. it. Once you get one, it you just you just feel so much better. I can obviously not on a professional level, but it's it's like writer's block. We can both relate to that. Uh, maybe a lot of people that you know in your professional life, if you're if you're a writer or any kind of creative um, in, in a creative industry, you can just sit there all day at a blank screen, and all of a sudden it just kind of like clicks, and you do it. It's not dissimilar from this you know you just you get one it comes a little bit easier i guess to go to your first question does it mean that he gets dealt i don't know because it it depends on what he wants i think the that conversation would happen with lamarillo i want to believe that the conversation can go and i feel like i've brought this up with chara or no or andy green or something like that where just because you trade him doesn't mean you can't bring him back in the off season. Right. Right. Like you can have that. Con- I know it's like people with families and it's, it's tough to think about it like that. And everyone just says it's a business, but you, you definitely leave, you know, your feelings can get hurt. I can, I can absolutely see that happening. So I want, but I always wonder if it's like, all right, Zach, we want you to come back next season, but we can get you some assets. It's not impossible. It's happened before where they trade. Someone gets traded and gets brought back. Um, and gets re-signed. I don't think that's crazy. I think it's unlikely. And that's the difference. I think it's unlikely. So, all right, we're going to bring you back anyway. Is it worth a third or fourth round pick? Who knows for a guy that won't play in the league for four years or maybe never. I don't know. Um, it depends on what they what they really need and what they need as far as assets to then get something else that they need in the lineup. Palmieri's not going anywhere. You know, that's kind of the end of that conversation. <laughs> Parise and Achara or Andy Green or Clutterbuck or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Parise's success. If Lamarol he- hears a deal he likes, I don't know that he just doesn't do it because he wants him back next season. I think it depends on who comes calling, right? If oh, right. If it's the Rangers or if it's or some, the or like in the Avalanche Metro. and they're, they're, you know, they have a need to, for help in their bottom six. I think Parise says, yes, yeah, I'm going to the avalanche. Does he have a no if move? It's, uh, no, he, he... no, he's got no trade protection. I just think that I think that and, and I and I've been told that Lamarello, Lamarello has a respect for certain guys where even if they have no trade protection, um, you know, guys, guys like Parise and and even Josh Bailey at this point, he'll say to them, like, listen, you know, so and so came calling. Do you want to go? If not, we won't move you. And and I think I can respect that to a certain degree. Um, I don't know. Maybe does it doesn't matter this season. Like, I, I don't know what kind of assets you're actually getting for certain guys. Bailey, I it has just kind of lost my faith. Uh, I'm back to like pre-trots level um, outside of like the last the 17, 18 season where he got like a bazillion assists and it was an all-star. <laughs> I'm back to the like, you got to be kidding me. I'm rolling my eyes half the game. Um, and then again, after when I'm watching the highlights of just like, I don't like the still images. I'll say that. I don't like the still images of Bailey with the puck. Things move so quickly. Yes, there are some of them where yeah. it looks like the net is just yawning. And most of the time you get a a one timer off or a snapshot and it just you can beat the goalie getting over. It's not always that easy. Yeah. Like I just I need people to understand that. 
I do not think Bailey should be back next season. I think they need to find a way to get get out from under him. I don't I don't know how you you get rid of him with two years left at five mil after this season, but you got you have to make that a priority. If you're not going to trade Varlamov, you need that five million or whatever he's getting paid off the books and a spot out of your lineup. I don't like the idea of having to replace a bunch of guys in your top six, like we spoke about with Joe last season. If Bavillier's leverage, if Bailey's gone, um, you just have Nelson and, and, and Lee is going to go down your your third line. That's 50% of your top six that you need to replace. It's a lot of assets and a lot of money that they do not have for top six players. Now, let me ask you about Parise. He's only on a one-year deal, so he'll need a new contract. Does he resign for another year, or is that experiment over? And I only ask that because we saw this season, and yeah, he's been great. I would, you know, take I would take the effort of of Parise and put him in all of my players. But is that experiment over? Do they need to go in a different direction, or could he be part of the solution on another one-year deal? I think if it depends on the direction of the, the forward group to a certain degree. They may have a handshake deal near the end of the season or whenever they're able to actually do it. They said that they want to bring him back, you know, barring some details and that there maybe there's a date. I don't know how any of this works, but by the way, I'm editorializing and speculating. So if no one hold me to this and yell at me when it does or doesn't happen. <laughs> so I, 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 but I wonder about the, the lineup changes that do need to happen and other trades like if if Walsham's going to move up and Lee's going to move down is Which there has room already for... happened yeah so like is if that sticks and that's something that they want to continue um but it's Lee Peugeot Parise okay that's that's fine i that's a good bottom six or if Clutterbuck's not coming back I don't mind Parise Sezikis guy. Doesn't doesn't <laughs> whoever. Martin Johnston, um, you figure one one or both of those interchangeable throughout the season. Um that's a perfectly fine fourth line for me. Um it does mean you need another even in a fourth, third or fourth forward now. Right. In in your in your group. So that's all that's again, that's some money. I on a league min deal, absolutely. The issue is that like he can't be the 13th or 14th forward. They already have that uh, to a certain degree in Johnston, who signed for another who knows how many years, three more years. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what you need to play with. I think there's he has they have every reason to bring him back. He's a good he's good in the PK. You're going to need to replace a clutterbuck. If you can replace a clutterbuck um, with some more recent offensive kind of play. Um, you replace the penalty killing. You replace the tenacity. Um, sure, on a league min, you just saved yourself $3 million, 2.75, whatever. Right. I, that, that's really fine. I would not be upset if they brought him back. And He, and... he was never the problem. I, we're on record saying that throughout this season. It wasn't his job, and it, he and the job that they asked him to do, he was doing perfectly. He wasn't finishing, but that's the cherry on top. This is the cherry on top to yeah. the play. Right, it's not like Palmieri where you're like, dude, I don't care. McDavid is ranked one of the worst, like by the analytics, one of the worst defensive players in the league. <laughs> He's still the best player in the league. Right. I mean, Austin Matthews is giving him a run for his money. Um, <laughs> he but, is, I, you know, and and Drysaddle is not like you know out of that equation in the top three, four players in the league either. And McKinnon's no joke, but like Matthews is unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> different conversation i suppose but like if palmieri could not play defense but he was scoring a shit ton of goals sure i don't i don't care if you can put him away on the power play and whatever shots would never let that happen but if that was the case sure like i don't care right as long as he's not the one turn like if he just got some bad numbers and just happens to be on the ice like i don't know i don't i don't think that's a big deal i think you figure that out that's just not the case with him. He's he was kind of like, all right, he's skating hard and hitting. That's not what you're here to do. 
Right. Like you need to be, you can't be Parise two. <laughs> we need right. you to be Palmieri one. <laughs> right. So Parise, I don't mind bringing back. Palmieri just needs to step up. He needs to be a top six forward. Let's talk about Kyle Palmieri because is he finally regressing to the mean? And that's something that we've said uh, would happen, right? Is he finally regressing to the mean? Or is it like we stated earlier? He's playing with house money right now. No pressure on his shoulders uh, via the playoffs. I think both. Okay. I think I think both. Like you get a little less. Again, you get a couple goals. Things are rolling. A little less pressure. You get to just play your game. I I think that's just kind of what happens. And I can't remember. Did Parise end Palmieri? I know Parise said he's a second half player. Yeah. Um. There was a recent quote within the last ten days or so. I don't know if Palmieri also said the same thing. But that's kind of um, been the case with these kind of like right uh, right wing forwards on the Islanders. Like the top line, Everlay was kind of the same way. It was inconsistent, started strong, waned a little bit, and kind of came back uh, near the end and, and had good playoffs. Palmieri had a good series last year, and that's in the, in the playoffs. That's all you really need, right? Everyone's everyone's got to have a good series in them. Um, yeah. Hopefully, it's not all in the same one. Um, but you got to have a good series, and the Islanders are really lucky that they had a bunch of players have a good series, right? Last year in, in different parts, right? Like Sorokin comes in, and does a really good job. Palmieri comes in, and does a good job. Everyone kind of like at a certain time stepped up and did their thing, right? Um, on on the way, and even in the Tampa series, it, game to game, it wasn't like it was the same players playing really well. So yeah, I mean, it, it might be a little bit of both. Um, Palmieri might be a better second half player than than we think, um, or than we realized rather or knew. So it might just be a combination of a few things. Nassiman Hockey is brought to you by DraftKings. Hoops fans, the latest offer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, is too good to pass up. I'm talking between the legs 360 windmill good. New customers can bet just $1 on any team to get $150 in free bets if they win. It's that simple. If Sportsbook isn't yet available in your state, you can still take your shot at a big payday. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Basketball Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code THPN, bet just $1 on any NBA team, and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code THPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 years and older, minimum age and location requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com sportsbook for full list of requirements and state-specific responsible gaming resources. Void where prohibited, minimum $5 deposit required. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the TN red line 1-800-889-9789. In Connecticut, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org chat. In New York, call 877 877- 8 H O P E N Y or text H O P E N Y 467 369. Natsum Hockey is also brought to you by Manscaped. Today I'm excited to announce Manscaped launched their ultra premium collection. Believe it or not, it's for your not so private parts. I'm talking about a leveled up hygiene routine with your favorite manly scent. This is an all in one skin and hair care kit for the everyday man and covers you from head to toe, literally. Manscaped is trusted below the waist, so now trust them with the rest. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off of free shipping with the code NHP20. We all know how essential the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 is for that precise trim. Their advanced skin-safe technology reduces cuts for your most delicate areas. But now you can enhance your perfect grooming routine with their ultra-premium collection. This package includes Manscaped's premium deodorant. No, not for below the waist, for your stanky armpits. This deodorant dries clear, is aluminum-free, and smells like their signature scent. Hydrating body moisturizer. Have tattoos or issues with dry skin? It's designed to keep skin feeling smooth, clean, and smelling fresh. Body wash to lather you up with their infused aloe vera and sea salt shower gel. Two-in-one shampoo and conditioner to clean your scalp with an easy one step. Plus a free gift, a three-pack set of lip balm that's made up with the ingredients such as vitamin E, peppermint, and eucalyptus oil to keep those chappers feeling moist. That's four products and a gift inside the Ultra Premium Collection. What a score! All these products are cruelty-free, parabene-free, vegan-friendly, and dye-free. The best ingredients with zero compromise. So get that Ultra Premium Collection hot off the shelves today. Get 20% off and free shipping with code NHP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code NHP20 at manscaped.com. 
power of attraction is now in a bottle thanks to Manscaped. And and that's what brings me to the comments made by Lou Lamorello, right? In an article, I think Kevin Kurz wrote uh, wrote wrote about this, and and maybe Andrew Gross wrote something similar. Um, you know, but going into the trade deadline, it doesn't sound like Lou Lamorello is convinced that he needs to be a seller per se, and the definition of seller going to into the deadline it could be it, is subjective, right? For the Islanders, it could just be whoever's on expiring deals. For you know another team, it could be players who have one or two years left that they're looking to get a, a bit of a haul for, right? So the, the first comment from Lamorello was, "I certainly know where we stand. I also know what I believe our abilities are." I don't I'll know. Just... I I wonder what that. I want to. Sorry, I'm going to like stop you at different sure. points here. Okay, so you know where you stand. I don't, and then I know what our abilities are. It this isn't the same team as last year, right? Like I don't. Do yeah. you know what the abilities are? Because I think you're seeing what they are. I think you're well. You're, you're looking at what you came into the season with. It's, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't know if he knows that. I don't know well, that he's actually looking at the right thing. Here's the thing, right? I am an advocate for have, having said for the longest time that the beginning of this season, the way it started, 13 games on the road, the injuries, the COVID pauses, like all of the inconsistencies in this team caused the product that we see on the ice today. Now, further, right, we're seeing Kyle Palmieri start to score again. We're seeing Zach Parise ramp it up. These are two guys who were vital to the success of this team when they were signed. They were signed to, to help bring this team back to the, the conference final and hopefully the Stanley Cup. That was the goal. I think he I think he thought, and we all did, that this was going to happen earlier. And because of the inconsistencies, I think that there's that, you know, that that thought process of if all of these things that were stacked up against us didn't happen, we wouldn't be in this position right now. I, can, I don't think I, I have to that. sell this team off because we were put up against so many obstacles. I, I mean, think I, I, don't, next... I think that's that there's almost two different things happening. You, you, like, sure, if you want to bring a Parise back and there's a lot of different things, but like there are assets to sell because you need other assets to make your team better in the future. Sure. It's not like this off season is going to be something like, well, I don't want to touch my team. It's perfect. I want to see how it does next season. There's always going to be opportunity to improve, especially because there's going to be money available that, uh, in the off season for the Islanders to use. And we'll see what happens at the trade deadline. And we'll see, you know, even in the, in the off season, if there's for some reason, any money coming off the books for the Islanders, if they can make something happen, but I'll let you continue the quote. Let's continue the quote. I'll just take right now a day at a time until we get to the point where decisions have to be made. I do not think of, uh, I do not think any different at this time than I would think if we were, say, in a playoff spot today or outside of a playoff spot because there are so many things Staples point. that you think of. What point are you referring to? The one where he said, regardless of whether they were in or out of a playoff spot, if they felt like they needed to make a move to make themselves better. They would do that, right as long as the price wasn't too high. Right. Uh, he goes on to say, everything you do is for today with tomorrow in sight. That will never change. So it's understandable, right? Because, again, this team likely wouldn't be in the position that they were in without the way this season started. They didn't really get to play any sort of consistent schedule until January. That was far, far longer than any other team had to deal with. A lot of teams had to deal with the COVID issues, but the Islanders were first and they were the longest and it hurt them the hardest. It's it's just abundantly true. So there are so many things that contributed to why they are where they are right now that I could understand Lamorello feeling this way. Does that mean he doesn't need to make changes? No, absolutely not. Does that mean that he needs to start a rebuild? No, absolutely it's not. It's a retool. It's not a, a retool rebuild. is different, right? A retool is, okay, we made a couple of changes we thought were necessary in the offseason. We want to get back to the Eastern Conference Final and Stanley Cup. 
a rebuild is sell it's a fire sale, sell all your assets. Get- I, guess, I guess here's the um, because the next I'll I'll steal your sure. your thunder for a second. His the next quote that you have here is saying, "I have a real strong belief in this core. There's no question in that." My question for you is, who are the Islanders core? Okay. Who I do you was going to say the same thing to you. Okay. <laughs> it's like we have a podcast. It's like, yeah, it's like we've done this before. <laughs> so right off the bat, right? And and obviously Matthew Barzell leads that core, right? Then you could say. These are like, in other words, these are untouchables. These are core untouchable pieces. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Um, Matthew Barzell. Noah Dobson, J.G. Pajot, Brock Nelson, uh, Oliver Wallstrom, Anders Lee, although not loving his play lately. He's a third line. He's a middle six guy now. Yeah. Which is fine. I see him as a Thornton, right? Yeah. You can be really good middle six player. Doesn't mean you can't be captain. Right. Doesn't mean we have to trade you, although it eventually happens, or he just his contract runs out at a billion years old. Um, although he's killing it with the Panthers this year and, and kind of <laughs> leading that squad. So he said Barzell, Lee, Nelson, Wallstrom, Dobson, Pajot, Pajot, Pelic, Pullock, Sorokin. That's the core. I, I have the one? same the same core, and you may agree with this. I say Suzekis is still the core. His contract plus you got to be strong up the middle. Yeah. And there's no, he's again, he's not the reason this team isn't playing well. I agree. He's, he's doing what he needs to do out there. Um, and it keeps you strong up the middle. It's a lot harder to get really good centers. And the honors are, are in pretty good shape with that. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Absolutely. So then that means everybody else. Now, Martin, by the virtue of simply being a New York Islander is not part of the core but likely will not get traded. So you, you have to add him to like a sub list. Okay. As he's around, he's not going anywhere. Your lineup, that's part of your lineup that likely won't change along with Johnston to some degree, uh, depending on how interchangeable you think there are. They are. So that's Martin and Johnson are one player. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten skaters and your, and your goalie. So you, you have you essentially have um that's only three forward that's three defensemen. You didn't include Mayfield in that. I either, didn't either did I. So that means you have essentially again, Mayfield could count as one that is just in the lineup by virtue of just being an islander and a good contract, unless he can get leverage for something else. But then again, you need to replace fifty percent of your defense. Right. That's expensive. Right. Now I'm not sitting here advocating that the islanders need to trade Scott Mayfield. But no, uh, uh, yeah. what I'm saying is that he's the he's the kind of guy who's valuable enough to retrieve you something because of his contract and the minutes he plays. So if you get the right deal, you do it and you figure out the rest of that later. The problem with Lavarello has been in the offseason figuring it out later because <laughs> hence Zdeno Char. Right. And that's like a last minute decision or again, a handshake deal to say, you know, if nothing happens by this date, we'll sign you because we won't have any options either. I don't know what that conversation sounds like from Lamarol's end, but the amount of forwards that you're talking about that could be out, including a clutterbuck, right? I, I don't, there were rumors about him or at least reports that teams were interested. Same with Bailey. Um, Five, six, seven. So we named seven forwards, and that includes Martin Johnson as one one forward. <laughs> that's <Monster>. uh <laughs> that's five potent like that's five forward spots up in the air. I don't know if that's a retool. It's not a rebuild, but it's not a retool. That's a lot of players. Potentially, even if you kept Mayfield and you brought in Sallow. That's still def- a big time defenseman in your top four, one way or another. I don't think you play Mayfield Sallow. Um, I'm not sure what the the defense looks like. Pelic Pulak Dobson Mayfield Sallow X. Does that just mean Green is back? Um, it very well could. If now, if they I'll can't say this, make a though. move, like 
I'll say this. There are those five five skaters who are interchangeable. Yes. I don't foresee five major moves happening that will fill in those gaps. I think that you have to plan on two of those guys, two to three of those guys staying with the team. So that's and, Brise and sure, uh, Bavillier if if it's Bavillier or you know Kiefer Bellows if it's Kiefer Bellows, right? That's that's what you have to expect. You have to expect that yes, there are five skaters who could be interchangeable, but only two, maybe three of those guys will be different. So that's still three other play, two to three other players, right? Which is no now small that's, feat. That's a retool, though. That's not a rebuild. That's a retool. You get two to three different players, and oh, I, I, I'm not sitting here saying they need to get three Johnny Gaudreaux. They need one. And they, need... they just need one. <laughs> and they need What's... they need a defenseman for sure. Um what sucks is like you have some of these guys that are absolutely right there and they have the potential. I made I tweeted the other day that that Jesper Bratt was what we all know Bavillier could be. Good tweet. And I think there was like, you know, I a mix of things, which some of which were just ridiculous and aggravating. And I didn't bother to respond, but that's the annoying part. You're going to wind up leveraging Bavillier for a defenseman. And you could have used like, that would have been an incredible top six to have Bavillier, Nelson, Barzell, Palmieri, Goudreau, other really good forward and Wallstrom. Like that's really good to then be like, okay, great. So we move Lee down to the third line. So that's really strong. And that'll be fine. Great. It'll write itself. We'll find a guy to play third line. Johnson, doesn't matter. Then you got to replace Bavillier. Right. Like that two top six forwards is really hard, which makes me think, are they really going to go after a, a, a Chikrin or a, well, a, a big defenseman? Because then they might not have the money or they might not want to give up the asset in Bavillier, even right. though it's a good trade ship. And you know, he's young, he's got a lot of potential, but like again, he's young, he's got a lot of potential. I don't know that you give up on this player, but he's he's still like unless you're an Islander fan, and this is something we have to detach ourselves from as people that watch this team really closely, the rest of the league might not give a shit about Anthony Bavillier. He's proven <laughs> it to us, but a lot of us have said he's inconsistent. That means the rest of the league doesn't give a shit about him. Nobody is talking about him other than He's a good maybe middle six player. I think I, I think when it comes to situations like this, systems matter. I think that different teams consider what style of hockey they play. And if they pluck him from a trot system and put him in, say, uh, I don't know, a Colorado system, he'll score more. I'm I'm of that opinion. I think that there is value for Anthony Pavillier around the league. What kind of value? I don't know right now, but it's not I, as high as, uh, you know, even if I'm saying keep him, he's really good. Yeah. It's not even that high. Like, no, I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's, I think it's l- like largely unproven. Right. Inconsistent has, has potential largely unproven. That's, that would be like, if I was a, a scout, that's what I would say. There, there's, there's not a lot to go on. Yeah. He has good spurts. It's a lot of players. They're usually, you know, they're low profile. They're not like the players that their teams think they are. And look, Kadri goes from Toronto to Colorado and just absolutely kills it. Yeah. I know. Like, so you're, you're right in, in that respect where it could happen, but like then he's got to go there and do it. The same thing we've said about this team. Yeah, that's great. They can win in the playoffs. They have to get there. Right. They have to, they have to do it at a certain point. You have to make it happen. So I hope that they can keep him and only have to bring in a Goudreau and then Bavillier just has the breakout season we've been all writing about for five years or, <laughs> however, you know, you know, like that would be amazing. That, that solves you a lot of problems. If Palmier can just like be consistent, like it's a lot of just do it. Be hockey players. That's it's so much of that. And you just have, it ha- you have to think it's gotta be the right combination of players. So here's the question now, right? With this core in the offseason, 
is a retool enough to return to the playoffs? I, I, like I was saying before, I think it's somewhere in the middle. It's not a rebuild. I just think if if you're talking about untouchables, as we've listed, and this is just you and I, obviously we are uh, not John and James and Lemarello's underneath, and it's just a mask. <laughs> so th- this means absolutely nothing. But if you consider what the, what the core is, which I'd, I'd argue a lot of people would say is pretty pretty close to what, what they want, it's got to deal more with what's available and what kind of... Cause, one type of move could precipitate the next. And you need to be able to move a Bavillier and and get the assets back to then flip and get a Chikrin. Or you're moving Bavillier in with uh, a couple other assets for a Chikrin or whatever the case is, or who the agents are and if they can hammer out a deal. If it's a, if it's some UFA, I'm not thinking about defenseman, that would be really good. Um Maybe they think Salo. Like I think there's a lot of like what ifs here. So it well, could here's be, what I'll it say. It could be. It could lean towards a rebuild ish. Like I'm not saying it is a rebuild, but like if there is a meter from retool to rebuild, it could be closer to the middle, a little bit more over, just because of the amount of turnover. Right. So they could look like that. It depends on how many players are moved and what is available for him to move it for. So I'll say That's this the big too. Question. There were there were other comments by Lamorello regarding the uh, progress and the the development of his younger players. Um, very pleased, Lamorello uh, is very pleased with Noah Dobson's development. Obviously, right? He's been fantastic. Um, he goes on to mention guys like Oliver Wallstrom and Kiefer Bellows, who are going through something similar to what Noah Dobson went through in his rookie season, where he had sheltered minutes and uh, you know the way he was. Uh, utilized in the lineup it's not going to be easy to sign more than one it's not even going to be easy to sign one top six forward that the islanders need to sign two is even harder obviously now i'll say this i right? have something eventually too i think I know josh you're going. josh bailey is currently a top six islander if they move him right or even if they don't move him the the current trajectory for Oliver Wallstrom is to be in the top six. So now if he moves up to the top six, it's actually easier to get yourself a bottom six forward if they fit this group. So your top six might be built in, whereas you don't need to now sign two guys for the top six because you have Wallstrom up there. Now you just need a left winger. It depends on, yeah, it's the left winger. Let's call that Goudreau sure. for the top line. Well, Gaudreau's Gaudreau's the right winger, so let's call that Forsberg. <laughs> Forsberg, who, whatever is is uh, Goudreau a righty? Uh, I think Goudreau is a left. Okay, so whatever. Mistaken. Goudreau, Barzell, Palmieri. Second line is Nelson, Wallstrom. So you need and Bavillier may or may not be used as a chip to get a defenseman. Right. I I thought you were going this way. If they believe. And I, I highly doubt this is possible. If they believe Bellows can be the next Bavillier, even the the most consistent Bavillier, which is to say, not consistent, that might work. He's an RFA this season, after this season, I believe. If you can sign, if if you can, obviously, I think you can sign him. Um, yeah, he likely wants to be part of this team. He's he's gotten a pretty good chance, especially of yeah. late. Um, had that great breakaway goal. He's had a couple of those moments. Um, if you think that he can be your top a top six guy or a middle six guy, if it depends on you know how depending on how you want to look at it, or if he's the new Oliver Wallstrom on the third line, and like again, Bailey's moved or whatever the case is, or maybe Bailey's just not an everyday player anymore. Again, I don't know. You don't really have the roster space to do this. But in a perfect world, if they move Bavillier for defenseman as as part of that trade, whether that's directly or indirectly, in a perfect world, Bellows just replaces him. And it's Bellows, Nelson, Wallstrom. Sure. I don't believe for a second that'll happen in a trots. As much as it may be worth a shot to do, I don't believe for a second he'd, he'd put two young guys who a year ago couldn't stay in the lineup or we're getting sheltered minutes and all of a sudden put him on the top 
one of the top two lines. But that's ideally what happens. You have somebody within the organization. That's how it works other, other for other teams. You traded a guy that you know was really well liked and all this kind of stuff, and just you needed to trade him because he was an asset. And somebody else just that's a Tampa Bay thing. Somebody else just comes up and fills the role. Right. So you hope that they are very different players, but they're both lefties, so they fit that. That's easy enough. But they can score goals. At the very least, that's the that's the same thing. Yeah, Bellows is not nearly as fast or anything, but no, I but, don't know. Yeah, in a perfect world, I think that's that's a that's the swap that you're looking for. I think of I think of Bellows as more of a younger Anders Lee. He's the power forward type, and traditionally, uh, there is that belief that you know players who are or power forwards who are uh, younger take a little bit longer to sprout into NHL power forwards. Um, I and think he's certainly with uh, yeah. Nelson and. Uh, uh, and a Wall Yeah. And, 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 and I, I think that he does have that in him. I, he certainly has the bottom six in him. Can he be a top six guy? It, it's possible. That's why I'm I not going to say it's impossible. That's why I say middle six. Good. Yeah. Middle's good. I don't think he should be playing first line minutes. Uh, second line. He could third line. Definitely. Um, so he has that potential. Now, if he could tap into it and, and reach his peak and stay there for a couple of years, that'd be great. Uh, the the point here really is that the Islanders have options for their top six next season. It it the 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 plan is to have a guy like Wallstrom step in on your top six and sign a guy for your bottom six. Uh, that's you know a little easier to uh, and more attainable to do. Uh, they definitely have on their bucket list or, or on their their checklist to sign a top six guy, a top line guy. They need uh, to preferably a scorer and likely a defenseman. Um, but with the development of, you know, Wallstrom and, and possibly Bellows, those guys moving up into increased roles makes it easier for you to fill out your bottom six. So I think that's the plan. I think that's what Lamorello meant by, you know, look at what, what Dobson went through, apply that to Wallstrom. I think next year the plan is to have those guys with in, in increased roles. The the fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. It, it, it's just the um, what's it called? What the the oh man, the the words eluding my head. Uh, the probation period. There it is. The probation period will be over, right? These are these guys need to be NHL players now. I it's, I don't think that's wrong. I mean, they've given Dobson a little bit more of that rope, and and he's done really well. I don't know what his defensive numbers look like, but his offensive numbers are great. And if Pulak can get back to form next year, um, which you were hoping happened this year as far as the offense was concerned, but if he can get back, that's great. Yeah. And then you, you're maybe adding another player, another defenseman that could do that, or just someone that's just solid defenseman, frankly. It just needs to be somebody that's a good player Yeah. Um, on the back end. That's totally fine. Um, that's But that's... If you have three kind of offensive-minded defensemen that are also good in their own end... Um, and then three that are just kind of like big bullies or just other solid players that don't you know. Not, you have a Scott Mayfield, you have a Pellick who's obviously just amazing in his own end and has offensive upside when he wants to. Um, just, he just decides he's uh, an amazing forward. Um, and then I don't know. Is it a sallow? Is it a, is it a green? Is it the answer? Yes. There's two spots. Um, <laughs> so like, what is that? What does that look like? Yeah. Yeah, I, and you know, to answer my own question, is a retool going to be enough? Um, if it's done properly, yes, because I still think that the core of this team uh, is plenty good enough to be who they once were uh, in the previous two postseasons. I think that they're good enough to, uh, you know, surpass a Washington Capitals in the standings. Not maybe not this season, but next season. Um, I still don't think the Rangers are as good as everyone's making them out to be. Igor Shesterkin has been fantastic the play in front of him not so much Shesterkin's basically been a brick wall um I don't know if he can sustain that forever I mean it's been a really long time and it's been great for the Rangers um but I I do think that with the the right structure the core that they have and the proper retool to bring in elite talent because they need it the the moves have to be made this summer and yes I think it it will be enough so I'll say I'll say this before we move on 
I think in the past, Lamarillo has made moves that we didn't understand at the time, and they turned out to be really good. This summer, in order for it to really make sense and really hit home in as few moves as possible, um, like a retool, they need to be obvious. They need we need to see the move, understand who the player who the player coming in is or the players coming in are, and be like, "Yep, they made the team better." Obvious, I like, like that without question. In the past, he's gotten away with it, and they and he built that trust. And look, Parise definitely did that. Green definitely did that. There there are some players that he brought. Komarov did that. He played the role a lot of different roles, and he was just doing what he was asked to do. Komarov, you you can't like. Shoot him into the sun, right. Bailey to some degree too. Like I, you know, I guess cut him some slack because he, he's being told to go out there and play. Never. You know? I mean, he's also like you know. I also understand the other perspective, which is to say, uh, he's not been what we call in hockey not good. But Lamarillo's moves need to be obvious. That's the difference this offseason. It can't be these like, ooh, I wonder if that'll work out. Nope. It needs like, it needs to be catastrophic. Yeah, for it not to work. Like it needs to be like, yes, Goudreau will help. Duh, yes, move on. Like that's that's what it needs to be. It's not Palmieri. Like, oh well, he's a little older, but he's from Long Island. He had a really good playoffs. Like that could really be a good move. It needs to be like, nope, straight up. That was a great move. That's going to make this team better this season, next season, however long they're going to be the team. I'm barring barring some ridiculous injury or whatever. It's a no-brainer move. Anyone would have made that move any day of the week. Yeah, right. It can't. Uh, it can't be. It can't be a guessing. We'll wait and see. Cannot yeah. be. That's, that's well the said because that's there. largely what it's been, right? Yeah, that's like over the. Oh wow, okay. I didn't. I didn't really see that, but let's see. Like you know, and then it works, and you're like, oh shit, okay. That's that's like totally fine. Yeah, like oh, like, and he's a really good player, but it's like, oh, right, that was a quiet move. Like I wasn't really on my radar. It wasn't like, you know what the Islanders need as a third line center, JG <laughs> Peugeot. You know, it wasn't like a lot of other players who were like, oh man, or Duclair. If Lamarillo isn't kicking himself every night before bed, not having tried to make a, a move for this guy, Jesus fucking Christ. I like, I lose sleep over it. I yeah. keep seeing, I'm like, I, I just like don't understand. But like, that's the kind of like, he needs to make that kind of move. Like, yes, this makes a team better. Even if they're kind of unproven, like, yes, this this ton of potential could absolutely thrive in this system. Like, it just has to make sense. It yeah. can't be it can't be what they've done. It, yeah. it just even on even in goal. Wow, Varlamov's kind of like, man, and then yeah, okay, then he blows up. Leonard, oh, okay. That's weird. Like, let's see if that works out. Um, it can't be those moves, right? They need to, they need, just need to work. Yeah. That's, that's it. And it can't be, it can't handcuff, tr- handcuff trots either. That's the problem. I think we said this last week. Trots is also dealing with what he has. He, he can't like magically just bring, it's not his job. He doesn't bring players up. He yeah. can suggest whatever he wants to them. Who, who is coming up? Yeah. Who's actually going to make the team better? If they're selling assets and they need guys, if they're going to Arizona Coyotes the season and just like not have guys to play, then yeah, you need to call up a home stream into this guy and that guy. I have a really hard time believing they'll make a bunch of moves. I think some players get moved. I can speculate that. That's safe to assume. But it's not like Clutterbuck and Parise and Shara and Green and Varlamov like, and, and Bailey. Like, like maybe two guys. Yeah, maybe in season, and then what? You, it's not like you don't have guys to play. You have an Aho. Right. Yeah, Char gets moved. You have Aho. Done. You're not calling up anybody. No. Maybe you trade, Grant you trade Bailey. They have to. You trade Bailey. Uh, you got Bellows. You got Johnson. You move the lines around. Who cares? Your season's yep. over. Like, there, there's just not room in this lineup. So then you're really just, as I've said, rearranging deck territory. Deck chairs on the Titanic. Well, speaking of Barry Trotz, let's talk about his job security because more comments by Lou Lamorello for those who were screaming ridiculously, might I add, about 
the security of Barry Trotz's job. Lamorello stated that Barry Trotz would remain in the job, quote, as long as he'd like to coach this team, and the organization wants him to coach this team. The Islanders GM later added, he's done an incredible job trying to navigate through all the extenuating circumstances that have transpired. Now, has he been perfect this season? No. Obviously, no. Has he given us four of the best years in recent Islander history? Three. Okay, three. Yes, he has. And he's earned the right to write this ship. He's earned the right to receive a blank check and, and, and sign it and return it. I understand the frustration with this season. You have to remember not too long ago. It seems like it's forever ago because... We're not really dealing with it with it that much anymore, but COVID was not that long ago. All of the issues that led to the demise of this season were not that long ago. You have to take that in, into consideration. As much as it might sound like an ex, as an excuse, it's hockey players. We we talk about this all the time. Are so regimented, right? And when they can't do you know continuously practice that regiment and that that you know those those. Uh, superstitions that they have at game to game, and they get thrown out of whack. And, and yeah, like I said in the beginning, they got to figure it out, though. Like, I, if, I if it's agree, just going to be what it is, and like, you're not going to have control over stuff. I, I understand, I know it's no, really I, hard, and I get you're going to have a game or two when you come back that are tough. And I get you know, Trotz is dealing with what he has and, and all of that. He's even said, and I, I wrote an article, I guess it was last week, um, because I don't know what day it is, I thought it was. Thursday, all of yesterday. So now it's only Wednesday as we record this. Um, so who knows when it actually happened? But you know, he was kind of getting on himself. Trotz was getting on himself about how he gave veteran players a little bit longer of a leash, and he should have pulled the trigger sooner on making some changes. I think I said afterwards, then do it. Make you know. Then he sat Bailey, right? He finally did it, and then injuries just bring him right back. I mean, what are you going to do about that? I mean, you could keep Bellows in the lineup and just put in Johnson ahead of him. Again, what are you losing at this point? He could have figured it out. He could have just actually stuck to his guns. But it's easy enough to be like, oh, guy got hurt. I guess he's got to... No, he doesn't. He doesn't need to play. You, you kind of need to prove a point here. You need to show the fans that you're going to stick to your guns here. That you're gonna that you're actually gonna make really hard decisions. On the flip side, if you're gonna trade him, and, and Lamorello says I need you to play him so I could shop him, there's that side of the coin too. I think it's yeah, like I said, it could be either either that or sometimes they don't get they don't get played so they don't get hurt so you can trade them. There's both sides have... of that coin, but they they you know if there's scouts in attendance that Lamorello knows about, like you know for argument's sake, let's just say uh, you know Vegas is in the building and he's like, Hey, the Vegas scouts are here. I know that they're interested in Bailey. This is just for instance, you got to play him. Yeah. I, it's, I don't know who has the money for him unless the Islanders is retained, but then you're retaining 50%. You still, you're, then you got a guy at two and a half million for the next two, after this two more years. Like that's, that's also not good. Yeah. That's dead. That's dead cap. Um, any playoff team can't afford a $5 million guy right now. Unless they have LTIR that they're using. Oh, the Rangers can. The Rangers got a lot of money on, uh, uh, available. Yeah, but if, if I'm them, I don't, I make, if I'm the Rangers going to this postseason, I run with what I have. I don't spend a dollar more. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not advocating that they should. Yeah, I'm going to say, I, for... I would, I wouldn't spend a dollar more. Uh, not worth it. If you're, anybody, you're, you're not going to win. You're not going to win at all. God, I, I regret this. They're not going to win at all. Don't overspend on any bullshit. Go into the offseason with some money. You know, all the leverage in the world, the New York fucking Rangers, you can pretty much, you've proven you can sign whoever you want. Um, watch, they get Goudreau. That would be. Well, if they need anybody, they, they, they're they good on scoring. They they need a, a Cal Clutterbuck and, you know, a shutdown defenseman. Yeah, that would be terribly expensive. That They would never. Trade Mayfield to uh, to the Rangers. 
I don't. I don't. That's think never going to happen. Gonna... But no. they, they need that kind of a guy. True. They they got two studs back there on D though, in yeah. uh, Keandre Miller and and Fox and just Shosturkin's really good. The forward group's really good. Yeah, I don't know. Like every other <laughs> team, they they you know little tweaks here and there, blah blah blah. Yeah. Well, I think that wraps up this week, John. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, we're going to close out. I want to say thank you to DraftKings. Use that THPN promo code with DraftKings and use the NHP20 promo code with Manscaped. Thank you to the Hockey Podcast Network, Isles Fix, and of course, all of you, our listeners. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to or watch the show. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Nassim and Hockey. You can find my work at The Fourth Period and John's work at The Hockey Writers. And check out Isles Fix, an excellent curated uh, Islanders newsletter. Uh, in your mailbox every morning around 8 a.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. Okay. And until next time, everybody, let's go Islanders. <laughs>